Welcome to part one of this Maritime Great Britain production of the life of Admiral Nelson. Horatio Nelson was born on the 29th of September 1758 in Burnhamthorpe, Norfolk. The son of Reverend Edmund Nelson and Catherine Nelson, who was distantly related to the Walpole family. Nelson first went to sea aboard the Raisin Arbel in January 1771, under the command of his uncle Morris Suckling. He was promoted to lieutenant in April 1777. And in May of 1777, Nelson joined the frigate Lowestoff and sailed for the West Indies. The captain of the Lowestoff, William Locker, is seen as a major influence on Nelson's life. It was he who would have, perhaps more than any other, shaped the fledgling officer on his road to captaincy, and they remained close friends for the rest of Locker's life. During this time in the West Indies, Nelson came to the attention of the Commander-in-Chief, Admiral Sir Peter Parker. This, along with his service record and the backing of Captain Locker, meant that Lieutenant Nelson was promoted to commander in December 1778, taking charge of the sloop Badger. Nelson's career continued to progress rapidly and at the age of only 21 his name was added to the prized list of post captains and he took charge of the former French frigate Hitchinbrook. In February 1780 Hitchinbrook was tasked with transporting and assisting the army on an ill-fated expedition to the Mosquito Coast of Nicaragua. Nelson's orders were to assist in the transportation only, however he decided to go further. The army's mission was to take the fort of San Juan on the shores of Lake Nicaragua and then to proceed onwards to slice Spanish South America in two, thereby destroying the Spanish dominance in Central and South America. Fighting through disease-infested rainforest and jungle, those that survived the journey eventually arrived at the fort of San Juan on the 11th of April 1780. The battle was hard fought and at the point of inviting the Spanish garrison to surrender, new orders arrived for Nelson. Admiral Parker had recalled him to take command of the Janus. He was carried back extremely ill and possibly near death, leaving the army to later withdraw after little success for such losses. Because of Nelson's health, he proved unable to take command of the Janus and retired to Admiral Parker's house at Port Royal where he rested, was nursed and eventually sent home to recuperate. In March of 1784, Nelson was appointed captain of the Boreas and returned to the West Indies. It was during this command that Nelson, along with the seafaring Collingwood brothers, Cuthbert and Wilfred, began enforcing the Navigation Act. This act affected trade between the British colonies in the West Indies and the newly independent America. Prior to Nelson and the Collingwood's arrival, the law had not been strictly enforced and even blatantly flouted. As America was now a foreign power, there were severe restrictions placed upon how they traded with any British territory, something which had not been a problem when America was a British colony. The Americans resented the restrictions, as did the West Indian colonists, but the law was the law, and Nelson would oversee its strict enforcement, seizing any vessel that he considered flouting the regulations. In September of 1787, Nelson was recalled to England and his ship was paid off. Nelson was effectively unemployed and his prospects for career progression were stalled. Arriving back in November, the newly married captain visited various relatives before eventually returning to his birthplace in Burnhamthorpe, Norfolk. At the outbreak of the French Revolutionary War in 1793, Nelson was appointed to command the Agamemnon and in May he headed for the Mediterranean under the command of Admiral Hood. It was in September 1793 that Captain Nelson first met the wife of the British ambassador to Naples, Lady Emma Hamilton. French royalists were holding out against their revolutionary countrymen in Toulon, and Nelson was charged with petitioning the King of Naples for assistance in the form of extra troops in order to strengthen the Allied position. The operation eventually failed and Toulon fell to the French troops, whose artillery had been expertly commanded by an up-and-coming French officer, Napoleon Bonaparte. As the conflict gained pace and Nelson's workload increased, events would bring him in late 1793 to Corsica. Strategically important, the British Navy set about removing the French from the island. Blockade, naval operations and a land campaign resulted in the eventual French defeat, but at a severe personal cost to Nelson. On the 12th of July, 1794, while assisting the army and commanding sailors and marines during the siege of the Corsican town of Calvi, cannon shot hit a nearby earth embankment, sending grit and stones into Nelson's face. 
The injury, while appearing on the surface to be minor, had robbed Nelson of the effective sight in his right eye. During Nelson's time in the Mediterranean, he assisted in blockades, engaged in ship actions, assisted the army and patrolled the sea. Various commanders came and went, some more effective than others, until eventually, after Spain was allied with the French, the order was made to evacuate Corsica and to leave the Mediterranean. It was a humiliating withdrawal for the British. In 1797, under the command of Admiral Sir John Jervis and commanding the captain, Nelson finally had a clear opportunity to demonstrate what it was that singled him out as a truly exceptional naval officer. The Spanish fleet had put to sea from their home port of Cadiz, and Admiral Jervis was determined to bring them to battle. On the hazy morning of the 14th of February off Cape St. Vincent, Admiral Jervis with 15 ships of the line engaged the Spanish Admiral Don Jose de Cordoba with 27. In a single line of ships with Nelson near the rear, Jervis engaged the enemy. The British ship sailed into the wind, cut the Spanish line and then turned to intercept the bulk of the enemy fleet heading away. As the order was for the line of British ships to follow in turn, Nelson realized that by the time the British line had finished this maneuver, there was a possibility that the Spanish would have been able to escape or engage the British rear. On his own initiative, Nelson moved out of the British line, something that would have been unthinkable to many other naval commanders. Nelson headed towards the Spanish ship San Nicolas and boarded her. After a short battle, the ship surrendered to Nelson. He then went on to board the San Jose, which had collided with the San Nicolas and lay alongside. This event went down in history. It was unprecedented for one enemy ship to be boarded by taking and crossing another. Partly due to Nelson's self-publicity, it became known as Nelson's Patent Bridge for boarding first rates. <laughs>